What is going on, Ada Nation? Welcome to the DAP Central YouTube channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. My name is Fareed, I'm your host. And as a part of today's video, we're breaking down and touching on the latest developments going on on the Cardano network. The very first topic I have for today is two huge milestones. Number one, surrounding the uptime for the Cardano network. And then number two, surrounding a major upgrade, which is Mithril, which is now live on the main net. Second, I want to jump into some news surrounding the climate neutral Cardano raffle, which is aiming to raise 100,000 ADA here going to a NGO or a nonprofit organization and what you guys can do to participate in the raffle in order to win up to 8,000 ADA in terms of prices. Third, we've got some updates surrounding LenFi, which is a officially gotten a few additional proposals to add CNTs or Cardano native tokens, not only as collateral assets, but as borrowable assets too. So make sure to stay tuned for that piece of the video to find out which of these CNTs here will be adopted or will have their proposals at least listed on the LenFi protocol. The very last topic for today's video is surrounding the Lace wallet. It's been a minute since I've provided you guys here with an update surrounding the development of Lace, but we've got some news here surrounding the addition of a brand new browser as well as support on a DEX. And then we've got a nice little teaser to what I think could be a DID or digital identity integration coming to one of the first wallets here within the Cardano network. Now, if it's the first time that you and I are meeting, my goal is to provide you in the Cardano community with the latest news tutorials and reviews for the top builders here on the network. If you'd like to support me on my mission to educate the broader Cardano community, then consider delegating with the stake pool, which is going to be DAPP. Again, I do appreciate all your support and I'm always thankful for my viewers, not only on YouTube, but on Twitter as well. Jumping into the very first topic here for today's video, what I want to do is touch on Cardano and a huge milestone which has been achieved here by the network. Now, this is an article that was posted here earlier by Cardano Feed. If you guys are not already using the Cardano Feed platform, I recommend you go ahead and do so in order to stay up to date with some of the latest articles and ongoings within the Cardano network. So this particular article here is touching on the fact that the Cardano network has achieved zero downtime for the last five and a half years. So let's quickly break down a few sections here and then we're gonna move on to the next topic surrounding Mithril. So the popular blockchain Cardano has achieved a remarkable milestone, which sets it apart from other blockchains. Cardano has officially demonstrated resilience and reliability with an unprecedented uptime of over 2100 in 30 days, translating to an impressive 5.83 years. So we are on the heels of being up for almost six years in a row with no downtime. Again, this is a huge milestone, not only for Cardano, but when you look at just the broader crypto space, this gives the assurance and confidence that some people looking from the outside in might need to actually start believing in crypto platforms or crypto networks. Now, keep in mind that when we compare this particular achievement to other networks, for example, like Solana, they've had multiple restarts. They've had multiple times where they've gone down. This is the complete opposite. So this is really the essence and what the definition of decentralization is. Given the total number of stake pools that we have running online right now that are used to keep the network running. Continuing on, while some networks suffer from occasional to frequent outages, which, as I mentioned, I think the most notable one is going to be Solana. Cardano stands out with this perfect track record of zero. Yes, that's correct. Zero downtime since its initial launch in 2017. This makes Cardano one of the most stable blockchain networks in the market, giving users constant frictionless access to its services. So what better network to be a part of than the Cardano network? Again, really showing its strength and its resilience here with this huge milestone. And I think this is just the beginning. We have had some outages with some of the nodes going down. And I know that that happened back in January where we had an outage of, I think about 
40 to 45 percent of the notes going down but that was for like a brief you know less than an hour and so we have had our own hiccups but we've never had the entire chain go down or become unavailable again i think that's a huge thanks to all the spos or the stake pool operators that run nodes to make sure that no matter what is going on with a subset of nodes the remaining nodes are still online and able to operate Scrolling down a little bit, there are some mentions here of the actual SPOs and nodes keeping the network active. So it reads, with over 3,100 active stake pools and nearly 23 billion ADA currently staked on the network, the community participation in the network remains vital. Now, these stake pools play a critical role in the Cardano ecosystem, contributing to its decentralization and ensuring the security and efficiency of the blockchain. Again, shout out to all the SPOs. I know that I've recently become an SPO and it's been a journey on its own, but this is a huge reason as to why the network is able to do what it is, which is again, be up for almost six years. Jumping into this next tab here, what I want to do is just briefly touch on the fact that we now have over 80% of the Cardano native token, which is ADA, currently available or in circulation with um, that being around 36 billion of the maximum 45 billion so we've got 80 percent of the token in circulation and if i scroll down a little bit we can see that 62 percent of that is currently being staked or about 22.58 billion of those tokens in terms of the average yield which if you're not aware if you're not staking to a stake pool you definitely want to go ahead and do so because you are able to earn passive income anytime that your stake pool operator mints a block therefore securing the cardano network so that average yield right now is sitting at about 3.36% with the latest rewards being a total of 10 million ADA. Now, if you'd like to support me here, I do run my own stake pool, which is going to be the DAP Central Stake Pool. So consider delegating to that if you guys are not already delegating to a stake pool. Jumping into the next tab here, just kind of keeping up with the streak of Cardano news, we are inching closer and closer to the 600 million ADA TVL mark here. And so right now we are at about 596 million with a USD value of 186 million. One other thing I want to show you here and shout out and credit goes to Cardano Thor is going to be a video basically breaking down the um, expansion of the Cardano TVL compared to some of these other top networks. So at the bottom right hand side there, you can see the timeline, which is um, anywhere from between 2021 all the way up until the July time frame of 2023. And we've now just got Cardano there at the very bottom, kind of climbing amongst the ranks when it comes to the TVL or total value locked on the network. I've touched on this before, but we, we've had so many DEXs come online between 2021 and 2023 right now, which include MinSwap, which is our number one leader in terms of TVL. We've got Wing Riders, which came along right behind them. We had Muesli Swap, which actually led the way. And we've got DeFi really kicking off there. So towards the very end of that video, I'll kind of roll this back. One last time, we did see Cardano really begin to rise amongst the ranks, jumping over quite a few of these lesser known chains. However, it is making its way up towards Solana, Bitcoin, and we also even have Matic and Avalanche. So again, just wanted to touch on that there. I think that is always critical to review things just like that, because not only are we focused on things going on within our own ecosystem, but it also does help us to also look outside and see how we're doing in comparison to other networks so that's going to wrap it up there for that initial update the next update that i want to touch on is going to be the fact that mithril is now live on the cardano main net so mithril has been touted as a way for the cardano node operations to be sped up basically this allows for members who are operating a node or trying to sync up their nodes to have that occur in a much faster time frame than it would have happened before now this was posted by banksy or the lead or maybe it's lead stake pool um, but they basically just noted that mithril is officially live on the cardano mainnet i've got another tab here which was from the atada um, stake pool, which I believe runs in Austria, stating that they had a mainnet sync take less than 23 minutes. So this is usually a process that takes, I believe, days or at least prior to Mithril would have taken days. And it's now being able to be done in just a couple of minutes. So a huge milestone here for the Cardano community 
anybody who's running a node and just the entire platform and what they've been able to deliver. That includes Emergo, Cardano Foundation, and IOG. So I wanted to touch on that there. And I think that is going to take us through the initial set of updates here for the Cardano network. The next thing I want to jump into is going to be surrounding a ongoing raffle to raise awareness and support a nonprofit organization in Madagascar. So let me share my screen with you guys here. I'm currently visiting the official Climate Neutral Cardano website, which is available at climateneutralcardano.org. I'll go ahead and leave the link to their website down in the comment section below. It reads here, CNC for short is an alliance of Cardano stake pools committed to using 100% renewable energy for the operations of their stake pool servers. So not only are they contributing to the network, they're doing so in a way that is using 100% renewable energy to fund or to run their stake pool operations. So I commend them for that. Now, what I wanted to highlight here is going to be a ongoing raffle here in order to raise 100,000 ADA for a NGO or nonprofit organization in Madagascar. So what we have here is going to be the quick video here, basically introducing the raffle. I'll go ahead and play this. And then we're going to visit their ALA dashboard here, which basically shows and, allow, and allows for us to see the um, tracking of the progress of the funds currently raised so far. So as you guys can see there, they have officially raised 78,000 ADA and they just need a little bit of help to get that remaining 22,000 ADA to reach their initial goal here of 100,000 ADA. So I'm going to jump back over here. I'm going to expand this window and we're going to go ahead and just quickly watch this video here and then we'll pick back up right once this is over. This is Madagascar, a jewel of biodiversity under threat. What if your love for digital art could help preserve this unique sanctuary? Madagascar's fragile ecosystem is at risk. It's time for change. Your chance to make a difference is here. With our upcoming raffle, you can join the fight to protect Madagascar. Each NFT purchased fuels essential environmental conservation efforts in Madagascar. Together, we're turning digital art into tangible change. Join us. Your NFT, our shared mission. Be part of the raffle for Madagascar. Embrace change. That is going to do it there for that brief introduction and review of everything related to the raffle. I want to just give a shout out to John and Leon for reaching out and asking me to spread awareness surrounding this. I think this is the least that I can do here for such a wonderful cause. Again, going towards preservation of the natural areas within the region of Madagascar. So let's jump into some of the details here surrounding the actual raffle and how you guys in the community can begin to participate. So it states here. By purchasing an exclusive NFT raffle ticket, you could be the lucky winner walking away with prizes valued up to 8,000 ADA. Now, as a part of that video that was rolling, you guys did see some of the project's tokens that you will be able to earn, which include the Noon tokens, as well as NFTs and the CNCALA tokens. Now, more importantly, every ticket that you buy will bring them one step closer towards their monumental 100,000 ADA funding goal, paving the way for a greener and more sustainable Madagascar. Scrolling down a little bit, we've got some key facts here surrounding the actual dates and participation of the raffle. So raffle ticket sales 
commence on Friday, July 14th. So they've been running for about two weeks or so. Now for a shot at winning one of the three sens sensational, excuse me, prizes, all you need to do is go ahead and purchase one of the NFT raffle tickets. The sale window opens from the 14th of July or epoch number 424 and closes either when all 600 tokens or all 600 tickets are sold out or on August 18th, which is going to be epoch number 431. Jumping over to their official dashboard, managing all of the funds that have currently come in and some of their contributions, we can see that they've now planted over 9,000 trees within the ground, and they've also got 6,000 currently in pots with 78,000 ADA currently being donated. So again, check out the links down below if you guys would like to participate in the raffle. But again, keep in mind that this is for a much greater cause here than just the current Cardano community. This has a real world impact within the entire region of Madagascar. That is going to do it there for that particular update. Jumping into the next segment here for today's video, I do want to highlight some information surrounding Len Phi. So this team has rebranded over from AADA. I've mentioned that before. And they've been having a lot of on-chain proposals that have been coming through over the course of the past month or so. So the biggest one and the most notable was the one that just took place with SNEC being added as a collateral asset where it barely passed with a yes vote of, I think, you know, 50 or 60,000 of the Len5 tokens. So one of the closest ever votes they've had for a asset to be brought on chain. And since then, we now have an additional four proposals taking place using their governance portal. So if you hold Len5, make sure to go ahead and exercise your rights to vote. And these will be for the following proposals. Number one, to add IUSD as a collateral option, which basically means that you'll be able to take your IUSD, which is a synthetic stable coin developed by Indigo, and use that to borrow additional crypto funds on the LenFi protocol. Number two, add Iagon as a collateral option. Again, Iagon is going to be a decentralized data management solution being built on Cardano. And the number three, to add the ENCS token or Ncoins token as a borrowable option. So this is going to be different than the two prior proposals that I just mentioned. Number three will be to add OPT or the option flow uh, token from the MuesliSwap team as a borrowable and collateral option available on Len5. So one thing that does stick out to me is the fact that IUSD had not already been listed. I'm surprised it's a stable coin with a real world asset backed value. And then we've also got OPT. And I'm surprised that this has gotten listed on proposal so quickly. Again, keep in mind that we are waiting for the OPT testnet and that this was just recently released. I want to say about a week and a half ago where we saw the public token sale taking place, where they had a sale for the public with over 70% of the total token supply. If you guys want more information surrounding OPT, I've got a full dedicated video. I've also got a playlist sp specifically, excuse me, for the um, Indigo protocol, as well as Iagon. I am going to be having Vladimir from the Ncoins team on the channel here very soon for an interview. So if you guys have any questions surrounding Ncoins or any of these other projects here, go ahead and leave your comments down below so I can go ahead and try to answer those. Moving right along, I did mention earlier that SNEC was listed as a collateral asset. And so we've just got a mention here from the official LenFi protocol surrounding that news. So it says here, welcome SNEC joining the LenFi collateral family. If you hold SNEC, you can now go ahead and use that in order to leverage that to borrow additional crypto using LenFi. Jumping into the next tab here, this was posted by Goofy Crisp. And this is interesting data coming in here surrounding the addition of SNEC directly into LenFi as collateral. So after two days on LenFi official, SNEC is the number two most used collateral on LenFi. This really speaks volumes here. I know a lot of people were kind of hesitant to add SNEC as a meme coin for collateral on LenFi, but this is really positive news, especially after only two days. So the number one most used asset on LenFi is of course the LenFi token, which has 84% of the um, market share in terms of being used as collateral, immediately followed by SNEC, again, which is only added about two days ago with 9.3% of the share. 
Right below that, the closest other token is going to be the MIN token from MinSwap with 3.9%. Then WMT or the World Mobile Token with 1.5%. And then we've got Kopi and WRT. So really making a presence for itself here and really giving some hard data to anybody who may have doubted the addition of SNEC here on the Len5 protocol. Now it also states here that SNEC circulating supply is now 3.2% locked up in loans. I believe 100% of the actual or very close to 100% of the total SNEC supply is currently circulating. So to see that 3% is already locked up in loans is huge. And I think it's only going to grow over the course of the next few weeks and months ahead to come. Very lastly, SNEC represents 10% of LenFi's total platform TVL, which I mentioned earlier there as well. So some key updates I wanted to mention. Um, let me know if you guys are using LenFi, if you guys are using SNEC as collateral and what your experience has been so far. The very last update that I want to jump into as a part of today's video will be surrounding the Lace wallet. So it's been a minute since I provided an update surrounding Lace, but they are a wallet developed by IOG, which is now available live on the main net. So it says here, hey, Lace platform family, we've got some more news for you. And they're now delighted to announce that Lace now supports the Edge browser. So a huge update here. And if you're wondering exactly where Edge falls, I've also pulled up some data here surrounding the market share for the top browser. So let me get myself out of the way. There we go. And if I zoom in just a little bit, we've got Chrome gaining 61 almost 62 percent of the entire market share we've got safari right behind them with 25 percent we've got edge with 5.2 percent firefox with two percent samsung with two percent and others with 2.284 percent so chrome is already supported i don't think that safari is supported so maybe that's a next um logical place to go ahead and get supported on for lace and then we've got Edge with 5.28%. And I think there's one other browser, which is going to be the Brave browser, which probably falls within that other category. So not a really big piece of the market share there, but we've got Chrome and Edge, which are going to be two out of the top three browsers not being supported by Lace. So congratulations to the team on that. The next update here is a short and quick one. Shout out to Ryan Flores here. He's a viewer on the channel. And as a part of my latest live stream, he had asked me to provide an update as to when MinSwap would be adding support for the Lace Wallet. And it looks like Ryan's wishes have now been granted. So it states here that the MinSwap DEX, which is the biggest DEX right now on Cardano in terms of TVL, has officially added support for the MinSwap Wallet. I don't think I need to go ahead and hammer on that one too hard. It's a pretty straightforward and quick update. The very last update here that I've got for today's video is going to be surrounding a sneak peek of something unique, which is now going to be coming to the Lace wallet. So it states here, get ready to bring your authentic self to Lace platform and beyond. I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen what some of the did hashes look like, but this is exactly what this looks like to me. So it looks like we might be getting digital identities or digital identifiers wrapped directly within the Lace wallet. We've also seen platforms, for example, like the World Mobile Token team or the WMT team integrate dids for a self-sovereign identity um, way of operating within their own native wallet. So. Another key milestone here, I don't think this has actually been implemented yet. It is just a teaser, but if we're able to get this, this will be a huge milestone here and a huge reason why people may want to use the Lace wallet over additional wallets. Keep in mind that as it stands right now, the Lace wallet is a pretty robust wallet. You can not only, excuse me, can you see your native Cardano tokens, you can also view your NFTs, you can delegate to stake pools, you can change between different networks. And there's also even an address book feature in the Lace wallet. So let me know what you guys think of this particular update. Let me know if you guys think that this might be something else. But I personally, if I'm the, am of the mind that this will be for a did or for did support, that I think is going to bring us to an end for today's Cardano Scoop. If you made it this far into the video, I wanna say thank you so, so much. If you found anything to be helpful, if you learned anything here along the way, I would appreciate you if you could tap that like button. Not only does it help to support me here on the channel, it helps to get this content out to other members within the Cardano community. And it also lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing a good job. So I'd really appreciate that. If it's the first time that you guys are stopping by this channel, consider subscribing for more Cardano related updates. And then if you have any questions for me, 
surrounding anything that we touch as a part of today's video, which include Cardano's uptime, the LenFi protocol, or Lace, then go ahead and make sure to leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.